everybody, this is David here from Team Powerhouse, Cold Banker with Eric, my partner in crime. It is Tuesday the 23rd, and we are here to talk about Thanksgiving and everything real estate related. We're very excited to have you here with us today. We have a lot of great things to talk about. Eric and I have uh, some great topics that we think you're going to enjoy, and we're excited to get into it. Yeah, we did, we did some good prep. We did one. some good prep, some good conversation, but let's talk about the things to consider in real estate. If you're looking to buy a house... It's Thanksgiving time next year, and what exactly are we looking for in a house that we might be interested in buying a home, what to make decisions on, etc.? Well, one of the things that you're going to want to, hey everybody, by the way, um, certainly one of the things you're going to want to look at is make sure that the, the house either has a large enough, so if you're going to be hosting it, yes. okay, if you're going to be hosting at Thanksgiving, yes. you definitely want to make sure you got the space for everybody. Absolutely. If you've got a, a, a massive family, you know, and you're, you're going to be hosting a series of Thanksgivings or a Thanksgiving. You have to make sure you got the space for it. You know, it's a very good point you make, Eric, because when buying a house, especially if you've owned a place before or coming from a large family, right, that area in the house that everybody congregates, it's the kitchen. And when it comes to a kitchen, you may have more than one chef in the kitchen cooking, right? Yep, and absolutely. I mean, I might not be that guy because I'm definitely not a cooker. I'm definitely a great eater. But... The people in the house that are cooking, they need space. And counter space is one of the things that are important to people. Now, you also may be having a situation where your house is smaller, but you're able to extend different rooms of the house to make things more convenient to people, right? Yeah. Uh, we talked about dining rooms. Is a dining room important to you? Some people, yes. Some people, not necessary. You may have a kitchen that has an island in it, that has people have seating, put a table near it, maybe it goes from the kitchen to the family room area. For guests, uh, we definitely have seen rented tables before. Yeah, I've seen. Um, so you'll go see a house, right? Yes. And um, they will list an area as a dining room, and it's technically it's really it's a dining area because yes. it's not enclosed, right? But they can be large. Absolutely. You know, the dining areas can be large, and the good thing with the dining area is you're not just enclosed within this four walls, Yes. you know? Yes. So you actually can expand, you can run a longer table, they may run into your living room, Yes. you know, but you, you know, and then you have, and then you don't lose sight of the kids table. Remember, there's the kids table it's, too. You know, it's a very good point, you bring up the kids table, I'm happy you mentioned that. When I was a kid growing up, my mom has five sisters and the amount of cousins that were at this kids table, they're like 25 kids sitting down in one area, and the eight adults were sitting in another area, or, or 10 adults, or whatever it was. Right. Um, and I remember we talked about maybe just when you're a kid growing up, and what point do you actually get to make it to the adult table? Yeah. What is that? that? I don't know. I don't know. Is that, um, and I don't know, Jonathan, uh, feel free to chime in. I don't know when it was you made it from the, from the kids' table to the adult table. It was only Madeline and I, so... If there was never a kid's, kid's table. table. Okay. So in your family, did you come from a larger family? Did you have a lot yeah, of Yeah, well, I mean, um, we, would have, we would have uh, a series of Thanksgivings in the same day, you know? Yeah. Because different households had their Thanksgiving, so we would go to my aunt's Thanksgiving, or we would do our own Thanksgiving, and then we'd go to my aunt's house, or, you know, some... I like that idea some, a lot. ...some that's, blend of Thanksgiving. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, but it was always, I mean, we're... It was all almost always fifteen plus people, yeah. fifteen twenty people, and um, um, I don't remember when it was that I got to sit at the adult table. I think I do remember. Um, I think I was about thirteen or fourteen, where I was able to cross the divider. And in our house, my mom's house, she has like the formal dining room, but it wasn't big enough to have everybody in there. So there's a doorway, if you will, that opened up, and there was ta she'd rent tables, and it would run down the hallway literally like run down and she had to rent tables and chairs um and i remember when i was you know i think 13 or 14 i was able to sit at the adult table but then i was bored the, at the adult table because all the kids are having all the fun over there because yep. they're throwing food they're having fun yeah that's one of those situations be careful what you ask for right you know because yes. you get there and you're like i don't want to be here not to mention now you're gonna get in trouble for doing things you weren't doing before at the adult table mm -hmm. so i definitely mm -hmm. will say it, it's funny it, it, now that all of us yeah the team power has plug yeah, it's Team Power, so Tumblr, Tumblr here. Um, so, you know, going back to the, it, it's just a, it's an interesting concept. How many cousins or friends or brothers and sisters do you have? How, how close in age are you? And do you get to that table? Mm -hmm. By the way, let's go back for one second just to pause. Station identification. Make sure you're following us, please, on our Instagram page, Team Powerhouse Sells. 
no, sorry. On Instagram, it's Team Powerhouse Real Estate. On TikTok, it's Team Powerhouse Sales. Go to our YouTube channel, please, and subscribe. We were looking forward to having you watch our extended videos. I think we have right now about 20 something videos so far. 22 Powercasts. 22, so we had 22 episodes. We are 23rd episode. We just started a few months ago, so we're really excited about this, and things have been really taking off. We have to do something so special for the 25th. Year. That's yeah. half a year. Ah, uh, that's a good point. We have yeah. to do something for the 25th. We'll definitely do some more. Well, let's do something for the 50th. 25th? That's not, that's not a big one. Well, though. this is the 24th. Come on. What number is this we just said? 23. 23. I know the number 25? Well, that's, 20, that's about 20 minutes. That's, 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 that's 23 easy. episodes, and that's not even including, like, the... Other, but, 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 all right, we're getting sidetracked for one second. Come back to the table, but you are right, and we are going to make some next week's going to be crazy, though. Did you just no? <laughs> I heard a noise coming from up the table. I did too. I don't know, Dave. That yeah. is the chair. I don't know what just happened here. Chair. <laughs> chair. Um, but going back to the table, the kids, and everything else, it was uh, a definitely a question about tra transition and what was the right time, and it, was it worth it when you finally got there? Right. Um, so the dining area is, is a focal point, and so is the kitchen. Definitely you know? the kitchen. Especially if, uh, you know, like uh, in our family, we've had, uh, growing up, I should say, um, we've had uh, uh, two, three, sometimes five different folks in the, in the kitchen cooking, you know. They were making their specialty dish, right. or, or, you know, some folks brought their food with them, you know. That's so it was true. like... You know, so you still needed some some place to put, to put all this food. Yeah. You know, so Definitely. yeah. Uh, so kitchen space, dining room space, whether it's dining room or not dining room, that's uh, very important things to talk about. All right, so let's talk about the ovens in a kitchen because when you're buying a house, you walk into a house and you're looking at all the very pretty things, right? But you don't think to yourself, is that oven big enough for a burger? Is that do they have double oven? Double oven is always a huge benefit. Whenever someone sees that double oven, they go, oh, I got a double oven. Um, and then what kind of oven is it? Is it gas or electric, right? Yeah, um, so we did the research. Jonathan, you're gonna find this very interesting. Very interesting. We, we actually we actually did the research on this uh, before, the, before the podcast. Um, just internally, I always thought there would be a difference. There might be a difference between electric and gas. Right. You know? And it turns out that the gas heat is moisture. It's, it's moister. Yeah. So um, so anything you cook using an oven with the gas heat yeah. is going to be more moist, uh, especially when it comes to meats. Uh, and with uh, an electric, it's going to be dry. It's going to be drier. It's not going to be like, oh but, my God, this but, is terrible. But, but crunch your skin. It's going to be. You're going to have a crispier, uh, crispier exterior in a, in an electric than you will out of a gas. I love a crisp exterior. Do you? <laughs> yeah. I do. Okay. <laughs> Not for turkey. Not for turkey. Not for turkey. No, no. I, I agree with you. It depends on what you're what you're making. Yeah. Um. Certainly, when I'm making a, a pork, Ooh. I want it crispier on the outside. But I think it seems a little crunchier on the outside than you cut into the juicy turkey. Right. Although I'm not also cutting into the turkey. I know that my wife has this. Oh, that you carve the turkey. I don't carve. I just come to the table. And it's already done. It's kind of like being so brought like out. Super high maintenance. I am right? super high maintenance when it comes. <laughs> She, I hear zzz, that electric knife, <laughs> and she's cutting it and cutting it, and I hear her sweating in the kitchen. She's amazing what she does. The family comes in, they're all involved in that, and I'm, I still know the kids. I, I like to be one of the kids today still, mm -hmm. even as the adult. I come to the table, all the food's being brought out, and I'm just like drooling. And the question is, how many drinks did I have until that point? Which we can get into a whole other conversation afterwards, too. So, oven, size, temperature, Let's talk about the fact that what's the average size turkey a family is getting for Thanksgiving? The average size turkey a person buys for Thanksgiving on average is... I'm going to say... Well, you say it's 15? 15 pounds. 15, okay. 15 pounds. So the average family is buying about a 15 pound bird. Now, See, but this doesn't make any sense to me. Because I know we were talking about that earlier. Yes. Um, so it says, what, 15 feet, how many? 12 people. 12 people, okay. And they're all in there, and I'm sorry to charge you, but... They're talking about a, about 1.25 pounds per person when thinking about what size turkey to buy for people. Really? Go yeah. Ahead. Now, obviously, people have different, because you have all the sides. I mean, when you get your dish of food, right? Let's think about that. True. How many sides are on the table? In my house, and probably the same as yours, and, and most people, and depending on the guests you have and what they're bringing from their different cultures and backgrounds, right? You've got at least one stuffing. Maybe even two different kinds of stuffing. Mm -hmm. One size potato, two kinds of potatoes. Is it, is it sweet potato? Is it regular potato? 
you got the string bean casserole. One of the things that you know, you know, yeah. not a vegetable kind of guy, but no. so what, what are some of the items you like to bring to the table for Thanksgiving? Um, an appetite. An appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I definitely agree with you. But it'll be a string bean, it balances a string, string bean casserole. She does, um, let's see, she, there's, the, there's a cranberry, which another conversation to talk about. Let's talk about cranberries. Cranberries, the debate. The debate on what kind of cranberry sauce you like. Canned or uh, homemade, right? Yeah. Okay. Definitely your opinion. I, I, lean, I lean towards canned. I would 100% agree with you on the um, canned. I, I've had some homemades and they're very good. Um, they're actually very good. Um, some, actually I'll they, say very few are very good at homemades, in my opinion. I just I just have such um, such a sweet tooth when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, me too. That uh, the canned just the jelly, you know, the yeah. jelly cranberry. I'm all yeah. about the jelly cranberry. You're not homemade, kind of you, person. You know what? You have it homemade. You have it homemade. I, I do it homemade. I'll tell you that my experience with homemade is it's either amazing or it's way too tart. Right. Mm. Right. And I that, agree. And that's and that's part of the problem because here you have something like a, a, a meat that. Again, depending where your background's from, you feel like the sweetness of it versus the tartness of it. I mean, that's why I like the can. I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah, and, and so you open the can, right? Mm -hmm. And then you turn the can over, mm -hmm. it is not going to come out. Right. Because I, I, I cook. That's a good right? point. <laughs> so, so you actually have to like do, you have to like disturb it inside in order to get it out. I think because both. you turn that sucker roll upside down and it's just, it's not coming out. I've seen it actually come out, and then what happens is people will slice it. Not the jelly. The jelly, yeah. I've never, I've never had a jelly just come right out. Maybe there's a special technique to get there, the jelly out. There has to be. It's just not. You know, like a special knife that goes all the way around. But I've seen what you're talking about because you'll see it come out in its entirety, and then somebody just, you slice know, it's it. more decor than anything. Yes. Even, you know, it's like about presentation. Right. Here comes this thing. Whoa. Right. For me, I'm impressed that they got it out of the can in one piece, you know. And I and I like a good amount of cranberry on my plate. So it's that it, it actually mentioned about the cranberry. When someone brings out a dish of cranberry sauce, you know, I see the people at the table like, okay, is there gonna be enough for me? And am I gonna grab it first? Right. Also with the gravy, right? Yeah. Another debate. Another debate. The gravy debate. Do you like gravy that is in the jar you buy in the store that's prepared and met perfectly for you, just heat it up and bam right out? Or is somebody in your household making the gravy from scratch? You mean like Val does? Like Val does. And as a matter of fact, let's talk about Val for one moment, who was here last week with me and rocked it. And you didn't uh, talk about it? You didn't I talk about the turkey? Didn't talk about turkey, didn't talk about gravy. And again, I was a little nervous about it. It's a missed whole, opportunity right there. It was a lot of missed opportunities because I was a little, it's the first time I actually had someone on the air that I was nervous talking to because I didn't <laughs> know how the conversation was going to go. You know, I was trying to tiptoe and at the same time, I want to let her be herself and be open in conversation. She did great, I was very proud of her. But let's just talk about the gravy for a second because the way Val makes her gravy, um, I wrote this down, um, she takes the drippings from the turkey. Now, I'm not sure if you guys do this at all, but she takes the drippings from the turkey, she puts it together with, uh, let's see, she adds flour to it, and then she adds chicken stock, mixes it together, and it comes out this creamy deliciousness. And what's also interesting is I've always seen that if, if the gravy runs out, she's able to have more gravy. And mm -hmm. I think we probably go through a lot of gravy in our house. Now, speaking of gravy, and I'm just curious, are you one who likes the white meat, or the dark meat, a little both? What's your what's your favorite? I don't have a preference. I really don't. Um, I think the um, I think there's more flavor in the dark meat. Mm. I, so like when I eat chicken, I like the drumsticks because they have some more flavor to it. Yeah, I like eating off the bone when I get the turkey. But there's yeah. just not a lot of meat, so that's why I like the breast because the breast has more meat on it. I definitely am agreeing with you in the dark meat. I am always at the dark meat, it's juicier, it's flavorful. It's almost like there's more of the brine or whatever was in that they were cooking the turkey in has absorbed into there. And that's why I do like the white meat, but I definitely need the gravy for the white meat. You know, yeah. like that gravy is a must for the white piece of, piece of the turkey, for sure. Um, what, how do you prepare your turkeys? Because uh, I, we've done both frying and baking. That's a great you've done the You've done the, yeah. the deep fry? Yeah, but I've never had a deep fried it's, turkey. It's oh. good, very greasy, not the healthiest thing. Right. I actually I once enjoyed it. Like <laughs> I once enjoyed it. It was definitely on the juicier side, but I definitely felt more of that oil in my mouth versus the flavor of the turkey. 
Um, and again, obviously it depends on who's making it and the gravy, you know, because when you make, you get that turkey and you throw the gravy on, you do the cranberry and you get the forks of that and you're mixing it with something else on your plate because I'm, I'm a mixer. Do you mix when you're eating uh -huh. different things? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm stupid about it. I am the same I'm way. stupid about it. I, I actually, when I eat it, there has to be turkey, stuffing, and cranberry all in one scoop. I love it like that. I can't, I can't, I, I can, I mean, I can, the one that I can eat alone yeah. is the stuffing. Yeah. The it's stuffing, I can just eat a plate of stuffing. Now, let me ask you a question about stuffing, because we didn't even think about stuffing. There's so many different kinds of stuffing. I stuff know, and, and listen, to people out there are going to cringe. I, I love Stove top, out of the box. Stove top. You, I love stove top. People stuff can't cringe. It's probably See? it's probably no. number one selling st stuffing in the country. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it is. But people take that and they yeah, doctor up. I know Val makes it a little differently. Her sister makes it a little differently. Um, and then I think it's funny if you ever try someone else's stuffing from somebody's house, you go, "Oh my god, that was so good." When uh, we were uh, Danny was in the sixth grade, and they did a turkey uh, dinner for school, and one of the moms made this stuffing. It blew us out of the water. Um, it was phenomenal. And ever since then, that's been at our turkey table. Good call on the water, though. Yeah, right? definitely. Oh, it really helps. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is I'm thirsty for. And the funny thing is, you're showing your name on the back side of that. Yes. That turn it around. <laughs> you just turn the piece around the top. Mm. So, stuffing, cranberry, gravy. These are all things that are important. Uh, and yeah, I'm a jar guy. I've, I've, I've had all three. There's three. Under there's there's a packet, too. There's a packet. You're there's right. a packet. You could just add. And, and nothing is wrong with any kind you like. Because you know also how you grow up. What did mom do? It's what you're mm. used to, right? Well, yeah, the, the stuffing, the um, the one feature characteristic of the stuffing that does it for me is the, is the spice content. Oh. Whatever whatever is in that stovetop is what I hark back to in his story. You know, his, my childhood Absolutely. or whatever. It's that stovetop. That's, that's it. It's like a Pavlov's dog. You smell it. You taste it. I mean, from it. I mean, early on, like years or decades ago, I would just, I would just make a, a stuffing. I would just eat stuffing. And like, I like my yeah. stuffing. I like my stuffing like juicy, flavorful. I don't like it dry. I don't like it too wet, but yeah, it's, it's gotta have some moisture to it. Yeah, like, it shouldn't crunch. Right, it shouldn't. It no, shouldn't not crunch. It shouldn't crunch. And by the way, I was at those are children croutons. You want crunch or croutons? <laughs> I was just last night at a Friendsgiving, by the way. Have you been to a Friendsgiving before? Friendsgiving? Yes. No. This is something. Been a friend's taking, but not a Friendsgiving. <laughs> we should definitely do a Friendsgiving. Actually, we should do a team Friendsgiving Thanksgiving. That would be an awesome idea for us to do. But we did a friend. We went to a Friendsgiving last night. Uh, if I can say, we went to the Macubianos, uh last night. There were like forty people there. These people did a Friendsgiving like I've never seen before. Everybody, the, the guys who made the food, the family, the Dave and his wife, Judy, they just were killing it. And then other people brought some things and the, there were some things I tried. I tried a, actually a pineapple stuffing. It was mm. unbelievable. It was like a dessert. And if you've never had that before, I've got to get the recipe, by the way, for that one there. It was amazing. Besides the regular stuffing. Pineapple works with a lot of foods. It does work with a lot of foods. It was amazing. I mean, it's off topic, but do you like um, Chinese food? Do you like uh, general chow? I like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you ever get the opportunity or you remember, yes. ask them to replace the broccoli with pineapple. That's actually a really good idea. It's ridiculous. The spice good. and the sweet. It's ridiculously good. What a, oh, that's a really, I'm going to, that one, now I'm craving things. I'm going to, maybe tomorrow <laughs> I'm going to do a little more. Uh, Plus I get to substitute just, the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's just stuff I'm pulling out. Eric, 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 Eric doesn't like vegetables. He doesn't like vegetables. He's just not a vegetable. Not a vegetable. Right? No, He's a weed corn. here. Cor corn, right? Right. He does have salad once in a while. All right. And going to the next topic is how about a signature cocktail for your Thanksgiving? Now, I can tell you in our house, we like to partake in drinking. Adult beverages. Adult beverages. <laughs> um, it's kind of one of those times of the year where, you know, especially if you've been cooking in the kitchen, you're fried. I mean, it, it, first of my wife, I know she's drinking all the way through. Um, just to keep, I think, uh, her mind at ease. Um, and which she should, she should be able to, and she's making everything the way she needs to do it, and she's on point. Um, and I always like when my wife has a couple of drinks because she's always in a better mood no matter what. Ooh. It's that good positive, like we're all in a better mood if you have a couple of drinks. And usually I've been drinking while I've been not noshing, because we also do a, a, 
what's it called? A um, we do appetizers. appetizers two hours before. That's another problem. You have the appetizers before two hours before. You have to make sure that they're full. You had a few drinks. I might even take a nap before we did Thanksgiving sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> before we even did it start started. But we do sing your cocktails. And I know this year she's doing two. She's doing a sangria, uh, which I like wine, red wine specifically, not as much of a white wine kind of guy. And she puts a bunch of fruit and flavors into the sangria. And then she also is doing what they call a figgy mule, which is pretty bananas. Now, you know what a figgy mule is? No. So you got the, um, what's it called? The beer, ginger beer. You got the ginger beer, you've got the lime juice, and you've got the fig vodka. Now, fig vodka, I got introduced to, I want to say it was last year. Fig I, vodka? It sounds is that a flavored it's vodka. It's a flavored vodka from figs. And I will tell you that it's got a sweetness to it and a blend that is phenomenal. And I recommend if you haven't had them before, go get just some ginger beer, get some lime juice, and get the figgy vodka. I know that uh, Premier makes it, or not makes it, Premier uh, One Spirit in Cheshire, uh, Ron and Donna, they have a good amount of that stuff there, and we get it from them. And uh, I know we ordered a couple of bottles. Plug. plug in. Premier plug. Premier, yes. Good people, Ron and Donna in Cheshire. Um, but definitely, I mean, anywhere you live, if you can get some big vodka, and uh, it's definitely one heck of a drink. And make sure you have lots of ice, too. By the way, have you ever had your ice go out on your refrigerator during a function? No. That's not something you want to make. Make sure your freezers are working properly and you have ice for your guests. And just get the bag of ice and then just get an ice bucket. Uh, well, that's, a couple of ice that's definitely make sure. If you're going to add drinks, you got to be prepared. you got to be prepared, for sure. Um... Let's talk about pies. Now, when it comes to pies and dessert, right? Thanksgiving is always one of those things that we know about. It's been well known to have a dessert table that will, you know, you're so full from eating, but there's always room for dessert. Um, this year, as well as last year, um, we always, first of all, we do pies for our clients. We have the pie event coming up. Um, and more than that, um, I love pumpkin pie. Are you a pumpkin pie kind of guy? No, not a pumpkin guy. Pumpkin. Pumpkin pie kind of guy. How pumpkin's apple? a vegetable, right? Uh, I think it's a uh, uh -huh. maybe. Jonathan, can you look that up? It has seeds, so is that considered a fruit? I don't know. Pumpkins are fruits. Pumpkins are fruit. Okay. I think because there's seeds inside. That's I'm kind of you know I'm not sure. Because they're like squashes of fruit. So there's seeds seed. inside of a pepper. You know, we'll are also to, fruits. Let the people on the okay. outside watching the show tell us if a pumpkin is okay. a fruit or vegetable. We did not prepare ourselves for that one there. Yeah. Um, Love blueberry pie. Yeah, they're fruits. They're 100% fruits. Okay. Pumpkin is considered fruit. Blueberry pie. I love blueberry pie. Now, if you like a pie specifically, do you know where that pie is from that just blows your mind? Mm -hmm. If you said, I love pumpkin pie from... Oh, oh I love a particular pie. place? Okay. Yeah. No, I don't have a, I don't have a go-to. We... we I don't know that we did a lot of pies. I know we did some cheesecakes. Okay. Hmm. This is New York, so. Yeah, cheesecake, so you're right. New York was more of a cheesecake, um, um, even even something a little bit more ethnic. Tell me. A flan. Ooh, that's flan? Really yummy. I uh, love flan. How about you yeah, yeah, yeah. like about a flan? Huh? How about you like about a flan? Yeah. I don't know, you the weight gain? You, you, may <laughs> 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 you may have to tell people what a flan is. Can you describe it? I don't even know that I know. I, I it's like a custard or something mm -hmm. like that, but it's but it's made and then you flip it and it's got caramel and stuff. It's mm -hmm. just caramel. Tough. Research it and then just oh, it's awesome. Definitely try. Uh, I'm gonna say, in my opinion, blueberry pie. My favorite blueberry pie, and it's another one. I'm gonna put uh, put a Bishop's Orchard in Brantford. Is it Brantford or Guilford? I'm maybe wrong. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop Farms. Bish, it's Bishop. Bishop. Bishop makes the best, in my opinion, blueberry pie. You buy it frozen. But you're talking about Bishop. Orchard. Orchard, not yeah. Bishop Farms. Bishop Orchard. Bishop Farms in Cheshire is uh, phenomenal for their uh, oh, yeah. peach. Okay, they peach, peach pie. pie. Peach oh, pie. amazing. Okay. And the Bishop's in Brantford or Guilford over there, they've got this blueberry pie. You can buy it frozen. I think you put it at 350 for like, I don't know, 30 minutes. Blows your mind. Pumpkin pie, hands down the best pumpkin pie. Costco. You cannot touch it. You can't touch it. And the apple pie there is amazing too. Now, those are things that are local. There's a line of orchards of really amazing pies. There's lots of places oh, that make sure. amazing pies. All right, jumping over the pies into... No, uh, you forgot something on the turkey, though. Yeah, I You did. forgot something with the turkey. Tell me what I forgot. 
I'm gonna remind you. Remind you. Okay. Did you miss it in your notes? Uh turkey. Dude. I apologize. Dude. Uh, oh, Eric, you rock. Tradition. 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 So during things. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is supposed to simulate a wish the, drum, the wishbone. Yes. Good call, man. So every year there is the magic of the wishbone. If you're lucky enough to have the people in the kitchen bring that wishbone to you, they cleaned it up, they put it in the oven, they dried it off to kind of make it so it's not all wet. It doesn't have to be that way. But it's just I've, a little bit better. Any, any wishbone that I've ever attacked um, is gotten, in gotten into that, you know, that, <laughs> yeah. that tradition, tradition, whatever, um, it was, it had, it still had meat on it. Really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause it was like, quick, let's get to the wishbone. I, I, when I was, my mom used to take it, she would take, clean it off and she would put it in the oven and just try to dry it off a little bit. Really? Uh, okay. But anyway, the wishbone as a whole, right? So Eric, we're going to simulate if you can see. This. So Dave did, Dave did some research. Did some research. And, and found that there's a way to win. Guaranteed, almost every time. Guaranteed win on the wishbone during Thanksgiving. Now, if you're watching, you're listening, you can put some money on this one here when you're going against somebody else. And if you lose, and if you lose, Dave's email is <laughs> David. <laughs> if you lose, you did it wrong. Now here's what happens. Here's your wishbone. Now if you can see it, um, it's obviously a make-believe wishbone. This is a large paper clip. Yes. The idea is you take the wishbone, you hold it at the very top. Okay. As close to the, as close to the, I guess, would, would you call that the fulcrum? The peak, the, yeah. the, the V, whatever you're going to call it. The top of the wishbone. And while this other person is holding the wishbone, you hold tight and you do not move. Do not pull it. Let the other person yank the wishbone. And as they yank the wishbone, they will snap the wishbone so that the wishbone, actual uh, base or the piece that makes you win, will stay on your side and you will have won the wishbone game unless 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 the other person yes has also seen the video yes and you're both sitting there <laughs> waiting for the other person to it's go kind of, upward it's kind of like in the movie over the top when uh, rocky uh summer stallone he stands there and okay, teaching, yeah. you hold your arm there and you let the other person go first and kind of keep as much strength as you can so mm -hmm. the idea is that most people don't know this routine Taking that wishbone, holding it, holding it firm. Make sure they have enough chance to grab them. Make sure you close to that tip with your thumbs on top of there, and let them let them pull, and you will be the winner. If this is important to you, go for it. Let's be let us winner. know, and let, let us, us know if it works. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and going to the next topic over here, um, we're going to talk about the predictions of football. So, so, so another. Thanksgiving tradition. Traditions. Football. Football. So we have three games this year, right? That we can talk about. Yes. Um, and yeah, Dallas and Detroit always have home games. They, that's an easy one. It's interesting. Can you imagine being a Dallas Cub or a Cowboy or a fan? You always stuck. You you you, you got to play. Right? You got to play. That's it. You know. That's what it yeah, is. It's always home. So we have three. You are. We are. You're right. Better be home than away. Because right. plays and it really sucks for them because they got to travel now afterwards and be on the road. Uh, so Bears at Lions. Eric, a prediction for the Bears at Lions. Now, you the home team or the incoming team? Uh, the away team. I'm going to go with the Bears in this one. The Bears. I'm going to agree. The with Bears. The Bears. Definitely uh, Bears. Choose the Bears. I wonder what Dane would say, actually. I'll have to ask him later on. His, his thoughts and feelings are. I'm sure he'll be clicking in on the conversations over here. The next one we have is Raiders at Cowboys. Hmm. I'm going to go with the Cowboys on that one. I'm going to go with the Raiders. Um, Although I think currently the Cowboys are losing. Because this is being recorded Sunday evening. That's right. So that's a very good point you're making. We are uh, going to predict a win for the Cowboys. And I'm saying the Raiders. All right. Good luck with that. And we have one more game. It's the Bills at the Saints. The Saints. Tough one, good game, uh, but I'm going to go with the Bills on that one. I'm definitely going to go with the Bills as well. I like Josh Allen. Yes. Uh, good team. Both teams are great, um, but I'm definitely going to go with the Bills as well. Who do you think is going to win? There's one more football game. What about Cheshire? The big Cheshire one that Eric's Oh, come on. You 
you buy it. Well, who's playing Cheshire what? Cheshire Suddington every every year. This is obviously a game for the ages, right? Yes. Every year it happens. Yes. Uh, what happened last year? They didn't have it. So we're going to go with Cheshire. They didn't have it last year. And two Fair. years ago, Suddington won in a squeaker. A squeaker. A squeaker. All right. One more thing I want to talk about with us over here is there are traditional holiday movies mm. that you watch on holidays. And Thanksgiving, growing up, it's always been the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I mean, it's just that forever, uh, was it, I forget the characters, is it, is it Linus who won the, the, kicks the ball and the, pulls the ball away? And Charlie kicks the ball. Lucy pulls the ball. Lucy, she pulls the ball away, yeah. yeah. And he always misses and... It's just been one of those shows or movies that you watch Thanksgiving, and then as an adult, one of the funniest movies ever, right? Uh -huh. One of the funniest movies ever, one that you watch it and you cannot help but crack up. Even if you have no sense of humor, it's a funny movie. Plane, Trains, and Automobiles. So make sure this Thanksgiving, you're watching Planes, Trains, and Automobiles for Thanksgiving. It's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be funny, and uh, yeah, before we before before the podcast, we looked to see what some of the Thanksgiving movies were. There's not a lot. Not a lot. Not what not a Thanksgiving theme. Yeah. Yeah. But that that instantly came to mind. Right? Thanksgiving is a classic. Absolutely. Yes. One of my favorite movies. Absolutely. If those aren't pillows. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the rental scene where it's at, where Steve Martin's yelling at the lady. Oh, the car for the car. Yeah. Oh yeah. That or you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Good movie. All right. Uh, we're going to last end this with uh, traditions, you know, what you're thankful for. Um, at your house, how, do you guys do anything special before you, know, you start or while you're eating the meal? No, no, not before, during, or after that we have a sit down. I know some, I, I've attended some Thanksgivings where, um, where folks would, you know, around the table, um, they would share what they were thankful for. Yeah. Um, we didn't. We didn't engage in that. That uh, actually probably safer that way. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that uh, my uh, my wife and her family that was a tradition for them. That um, it was for me. It's always been a hard one because you know when I think about what I'm thankful for, it always gets me jammed up. Me get emotional, never right. Um, but what happens is you, you think about those things in your life that I I know, well. I know. But the things in your life that kind of you know make you think about those things in life that are important to you. Maybe that this year, you know, there's someone that's present or not present there that was last year. There's many things that kind of come into play with that. Um, family, friends, people you love, care about, maybe people you don't like, you're happy they're not there, you know, they didn't come this year, you thank God those family members didn't show up. Um, and because they brought, you know, maybe a dessert that was awful. You ever have that feeling when they bring something to your house and it's like, you eat it, you're no like, comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. We'll leave it alone. I think we've all had that happen before. Um, and it's always been something fun to talk about later on in the years. I know in our family. I wonder if that, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't remember ever, ever having that happen. Um, Where like, you're like, you know, like, Everybody leaves and like you're left with the house and you hear somebody go, can you believe this one like this? She thinks that's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not, I've not. I've not experienced that. One hundred percent. But I've internally. I thought, was gonna say you're one hundred percent full of crap. This is this is <laughs> this is amazing. Right. You know. Or you can always tell because that that one item is kind of left on people's plate that no one really kind of finished before. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. 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 No yes, one went yes, up yes. seconds. It's still a full container of whatever they brought, whether it be sweets or something they brought to the party. But the dogs. Like, and the dog, right? Maybe the dog doesn't want it. The dog says, like, eh, no, thank you very much. But, uh, you know, this has been a lot of fun with you guys. We're excited for you to have an amazing Thanksgiving. Uh, Eric and I. We're thankful for you guys. We are definitely thankful. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Eric. Yep. If it wouldn't be for you. All seven of you. Yeah. Love you guys. <laughs> Please stay tuned every week. Um, we do this for you. Next week, I'm going to tell you, um, you're going to have a guest here who is an actor, been in movies, TV shows. Um, he's a great guy, funny. Um, the podcast may get a little longer, and I will tell you, you'll be glued to your seats. I guarantee you've seen him on a show on TV or a movie. And um, you got a it, it, It's actually better. Okay. Better than Dwayne. Um, but uh, we're going to do a little, we'll do a promo for it. 
Um, you'll know who's coming on. I will say to you. I have no idea who this is. Make sure yeah. you're going to be. Well, you're hopefully you're watching this one here, and make sure to be glued for the next week's podcast because I'm telling you right now, it is something that is going to be phenomenal. I'm super excited. Anyway, am I am I invited on or you're 100 invited? Okay. On. You're definitely. Okay. Are you kidding me? This show is not without you anything special. I I, I don't enjoy it without you. You're not here. But when you can't make it and you're on the road, I'm always feeling like I'm missing. In my heart, someone special. Part of my life over here. I love you, man. <laughs> and that's, that's awkward. <laughs> All right. So going to the next part of the show is the final, and we have the wheel, spinning. the spinning wheel. Right, let's... So we're looking forward to seeing who's going to be the one. While you're spinning, today. talk about the. We got the promotional cups over here. The winner is going to get the tumbler. Heather, you do a great job. We love giving our clients a free tumbler, and we're excited for that person to get this winning cup over here. All right, spin. Yay, congratulations, winner. Congratulations, we're very excited. Yay. Happy Thanksgiving, and we want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you so much, and we wish you a phenomenal Thanksgiving, and hope you'll think about us and what we talked about today. Absolutely. Yeah, all right. Talk to you guys soon.